Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Martian Dreams. When we last left off, we were sent by Carnegie to go and get some uh, flogginistai, propellant, something like that. I had it right before I practiced it. Let's try this again. Flog, uh, flogistonai, yeah, flogist, flogistonai, that stuff. We need to get some of that. So let's go over to Olympus and then we'll make our way towards the projectile where it's supposed to be. Of course, this first makes us go underground. Oh, let's increase the cycles. Be a man. Yeah. Alright. Back up to the surface. Oh no, apparently not. Got to be very quick to get out that stairs. They untrap you. Oh, you yeah, got to watch those stairs. But fortunately, I have taken lessons that from people who are stair masters. Yes. Alright. Now let us apply the use of the sextant. Okay, we are one degree south on the latitude and 117 west on the longitude. We need to be 30 south and 143 west. Hello again. These guys keep popping up. Go away, sex delegates. Oh, another one. Oh, it's a bush rat. Hello. Alright, where are we now? We're almost there as far as l longitude goes, now just the latitude. Here we are. We have found the 1983 projectile. Isn't it nice to have things written down? So we need to go and find the cargo hold. Here we are. And we need to look for various things. Nothing, nothing, nothing very weak pistol, and a stolen strap, a broken strap, sorry. We see a lean, dark bearded man with kindly eyes. Spectre wants to say something. What do you want, Spectre? Oh dear, Kulkakon, the phlogistonite must have been stolen. Stolen, you say, Mr. Spectre? Perhaps we should return with this news to Mr. Carnegie and see what he thinks. All right. All right, Spectre. Yes, yes, we'll talk later, Kilkakon, yes. All right, we've got the broken strap. Let us now press on back to Olympus. Back to basics. Basically, this path is where we want to follow. Ish. Yeah, this way. We hear something to the east. There's probably more sex telegas going psycho. Yep. Stop going psycho. I will stab you with my fencing saber. Yeah. There's probably more. We're going to ignore them and... Oh, wait. A canal worm tries to say hello. Go away. Where do they even come from? I mean... There was no water, so they should have all been dead. But as soon as we put the water back, they all suddenly come back to life. What is that? It's just not natural. It's not natural at all. Anyway, we are continuing in Martian Dreams. We have a stolen strap. And we hear something to the west. What trickery is this? It's a bush rat. Bush rat is eliminated. Yes, swine bush rat. Well, Vegetable bush rat. It's not as threatening as calling something swine, is it? Alright, well, let's just carry on anyway. B 
Yeah, some of you may have noticed that YouTube has had another one of those downgrading phases that they like to do every year, where they add lots of things and ignore what everybody says in the forums. Pages and pages of complaints and they're all ignored. But hey, there's no point complaining about it. We'll just have to adapt. Now where is Carnegie gone? Not over there. He seems to be sitting on his bed. Hello, Carnegie. We shall talk to you. We see a spirited, sharp-eyed man in his 60s. And of course he's American, and I apparently got Sean Connery last episode. Um, so... Ah, you again, Gilkin. No, not Russian, no. Um, let's just stick with Sean Connery. Ah, you again, Gilkin. No. That guy says hello. Okay, we have the band. We explain that the Phlegistonite is missing from the space capsule. Oh dear, do you have any clue who might have stolen it? We show him the broken metal band. Perhaps Mr. Roosevelt can use his criminological expertise to examine the feet from that. Please, take it to him. Very well, Mr. Carnegie. We shall take our leave. And take it to Mr. Roosevelt. <coughs> it is getting dark. Perhaps it is time to set up a tent. But it is... the night is young. We'll see how much we can squeeze out of the darkness before we must pitch our tent. That's right, we try to choke the darkness. Squeeze it! Squeeze it like a lemon. Okay. We are underground. There's lights underground. So that's all good. But there's no lights above. Oh, yes, there are lights above ground. A torch that remains lit. People don't sleep apart from us, apparently. But we will sleep next to the fountain. The adventurer is too near to set up camp, apparently. Gotta watch out for those adventurers. We shall rest until sunrise! Okay, sunrise, here we go! Yes, alright. Now where's Roosevelt? That's Edison? Tip it. Empty room. A man. Hello, man. Who are you? We see a seasoned looking man. He strides forward to greet you. How do you do? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet someone who shares the spirit of exploration. Exploration, I hear you say. His eyes shine at the mention of the word. Ah, what a thrill, eh? You know, I could think of nothing more than fulfilling... Nothing more fulfilling than the secret held by those places previously unknown. Yes. He looks, turns to look north and says, I have even been up to see the polar ice cap north of here. It is not unlike our own Arctic regions on Earth, but without proper equipment, I'm afraid that my explorations only scratch the surface. What's your name, person? Robert E. Perry. My best friends call me Bert, and I wish that you would too. Well, Bert, I am going to say goodbye to you. Farewell. Perhaps we could meet at a later time and discuss your exploits. Yes, I am exploiting everybody. Who are you? There's Roosevelt. Hello. We see a broad-shouldered man of an equally broad grin. He looks up from his work and smiles broadly. Oh, I say hello. Quite good to see you again. Quiet. Okay, well, we have a band for you to examine. I bet your best bet would be looking our ship from the Lowell Expedition. If there's anything suspicious, we might hold a fingerprint. You should bring it back to me and I'll take a look at it. Roosevelt looks eagerly at me. Has your search for items that could contain fingerprints proved successful? It has. He walks up animatedly and begins to look through our possessions. After a moment, he pulls a metal band from your things and takes it to his work area. 
He begins to examine the band, and after a moment, he shakes his head in disgust. Oh, boy, the luck. I will require a microscope before I can complete my examination of the prints on this item. If I may, Gilgacon, I believe that I have seen such an instrument before. Pray allow me a moment. Hmm. Hmm. She examines her notes from the journal she has kept of your travels. Clearly she's some kind of like 19, you know, 1890s stalker. I believe that there was a microscope in the Martian laboratory of the settlement of Helios. Would that suffice, Mr. Roosevelt? Yes, quite. Very well, go and retrieve it and return. I shall wait for you here. Well, it seems that we have a quest. So when we come back, we will retrieve the microscope. Yes.